Hello and welcome to the AccuMap Geology Overview training video. First, let's change our scale and location to the area that we will be working in today. Now, let's change some of our layers in our layer legend to customize our geology overview map. The first layer I'd like to discuss is our wells layer. Left of the parent level is a drop down arrow where we can see all of the sub layers belonging to this parent level. Here we're able to change the attributes for all of the different sub layers. First, I'd like to emphasize my gas layer by changing its color and its size. I'm going to change the gas sublayer to a red color and increase its size to 9. I'm going to click on apply for these changes to take effect. You can see the preview change as well as all of the gas wells in this area are now highlighted in the red color. If I want to, I can also make changes to multiple sublayers at once. I'm going to highlight the heavy oil, the oil, the oil and gas sublayer and change the attributes of all three of these sub-layers simultaneously. I'm going to change them to a green color and also increase their size to 9 as well. I also have the option to de-emphasize items on my map. I'm going to de-emphasize my abandoned wells and my dry and abandoned well by using my shift and control keys to select multiple layers at once. I will then change its color and its size to de-emphasize them from my map. As you can see, these wells are still visible on my map, but are now less obvious and de-emphasized. If we collapse our layers down to their parent levels by using the second tool in our layer legend and highlight wells at the parent level, we can make some other changes. One of these changes includes showing the well bore. If I put the check mark in beside show well bore, click on apply, the map now represents the location of any horizontal or deviated well bores. I also have some options for customizing these symbols. I can change the surface location symbol size. I'm going to increase that up to 10 click on apply and now you can see the H's representing the surface location for horizontal wells and the D's representing the surface location for deviated wells are now larger and easier to see. I can also change the thickness of the wellbore symbol. The last option we have for customizing our wellbore is changing the color associated to the formation the wellbore lies in. So we can do that by clicking the color map button underneath the wellbore properties. Here we can select up to four different formations that we would like to associate a color to. In this area I know that some of these wells are drilled through the gething. You can type in gething, click on OK, and then assign that formation a blue color. I also want to add Nordag formation. And assign this a purple color. Then I will also add the Cadam information. And assign this an orange color. And click on OK to confirm these changes. Now you can see some of the well bores have changed their symbol in accordance to what formation they lie in. If we zoom to a specific area, we can demonstrate this better. As you can see, the sections that lie within the Gething formation are now highlighted blue. Those sections that lie within the Nordeg 
are highlighted purple, and those that lie within the catamen are highlighted orange. Let's return back to our previous view. The last layer I'd like to discuss is underneath our IHS open layers, and that is our new wells layer. The data for this layer is updated separately from our main database updates. This data is updated every business day. To update this data, you simply need to restart the application and it will automatically download the latest data for your IHS open layers. If we apply this layer to our map, we can now see all of the areas that has new well activity. The triangles represent newly licensed wells, the stars represent newly spotted, and the drop symbols represent newly completed wells. If you are interested in seeing all of the new well data, you can go to our data tab and select view new licenses spreadsheet. This will download a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet of all of the new well data for IHS's database. You can sort by any of the column headings. So we can sort by province, maybe we're only interested in Alberta. Sort by substance, field name, licensee, or any of the other column headings. Now that we've customized our map, let's move on to finding some specific information about the layers that we've applied. I'm going to open up a data card for a specific UWI. Quick search button, enter the specific UWI, click on search, and add this item to my data card. We've gone over the data card in detail in our previous training videos. Today I want to show you some of the more advanced tools relative to the geology data. One of the tools that we'd like to go over today is the TOPS Manager. This is where we can go and customize our user TOPS. From the TOPS tab, we're able to see what user TOPS have been created already, as well as compare them to our system TOPS. To toggle between the two different databases, you simply click on the toggle source at the top right corner. As you can see, there are no user TOPS created for this specific well. So let's launch our TOPS manager and create a user top database. In the TOPS Manager tool, we have a number of options that we can change. The first is changing our well source. We can use all of our wells, wells from a cross section, or wells from a well list that we have created. We then have the option to choose how many wells are viewed in the top section of our TOPS Manager. Right now, we're currently viewing seven. Acumap is available in two different downloads, either the IPL or the ACD, and this refers to the TOPS source. Here we can see the IPL download, which takes the TOPS from the International Petro Data Limited source. There is also a quick search function where we can go to a specific well using its UWI. Lastly, we're also able to change the units either in Imperial or Metric. On the left hand side we have a header and then two well source panels. I'm going to minimize our header panel to increase the screen real estate for our two top source panels.
Then going to change the top source of our right hand panel to be the active user tops. We can now start filling in our actor user top data. One handy function to get this process started is copying the information from the system IPL data. I'm going to highlight the data, right click and copy, select the first cell in our active user top panel, right click and paste this information. You will now notice that there is a difference in the font for both of these panels. Any information in a italicized gray font means that you are unable to change that data. The black font indicates that you can make changes and the green font indicates an auto calculated value. You also have the option to customize the units for both of your panels. I'm going to change both of these to metric. We are now able to customize our user top information. For instance, I can change the bear paw TVD and MD to a customized value. I'm going to change it to 450.0. You'll notice that the auto calculated isopack value as well as the sub C value changed in reflectance of the changes I've made to the TVD. If you disagree with the auto calculated values, you can always input your own value. I'm going to change the isopack of the bear paw to 135.0. You'll notice that the font is now black, indicating that it is no longer an auto calculated value. For deviated and horizontal wells that contain a directional survey, you also have the option to auto-calculate the MD. To demonstrate, if I turn on the auto-calculate, highlight the MD column, and click delete, you will see that the values are now green, indicating they are auto-calculated. Now if I make changes to the TVD, such as changing the slave point to 3450, the MD is auto-calculated. If we right click, we have the option to insert a blank top or insert a formation. If we click on Insert Formation, a Select Formation window pops up. This is where we can find a specific name or formation to add into our user top data. I'm going to add a member of the carding formation. I can choose from any of the system cardium formation names. I'm going to select Cardium A, click on OK to add that to my user top data. I can then fill in the rest of the data. I can also right click and enter in a blank formation. If I wanted to create a customized member of the base of fish scales formation, I can do so. If I click on the tools menu and cr select create modify user formations. Then have the option to create new or create from. I'm going to create one from the base of fish scales. then can enter the short and long name of my new user formation. I'm going to call this BFS1 Base of Fish Scales 1. 
this is a formation. We can also enter it as accessory, contact, environment, facies, or structure. You can then modify the age of your new user formation. Now I can type in the name of my new formation. You will note that it automatically adds a U dash in front of any user created formation tops. You can then go in and fill in the rest of the information. Now that we've created some custom user tops, I may want to assign an owner to those tops. To create a new owner, you need to go to the Tools menu and select User Tops Owners. Currently, the only owner is the default owner. I want to add a new one. I'm going to name my new owner IHS. Click on OK. And now, if I want to change the owner from the default owner, I can simply start typing in the name of my new created user top owner. Our user top database also has the option to input custom data for four user columns. We can have three numbers and one text column. To customize these user columns, we can go to Tools, Edit user tops columns. Today I'm going to customize our text column. I'm going to call it lithology. And now you can see that our text column is now labeled lithology. I can then go in and customize the data. We also have the option of adding an additional top source. If we go to Tools, Additional User Top Sources, we can click on Add. I'm going to name this IHS and browse for the folder where these top sources are hosted. I click on OK. And now we have that additional user top available to be selected from our drop down top source window. Here you can see the information for that top source. Next, we have the option to import tops into our active user top database. If we go to Tools, Import User Tops, we'll then open up the User Top Import Wizard. Your first step is to select a folder to host your backup file. This is very important when importing user tops as this process can erase some of your previously saved work. The next step is to select the file hosting the information you'd like to import. You then want to direct the import wizard to what row your data starts in. Here we can see that the data starts in row 9. You then want to select what your delimiter is. If you save the file as a CSV, the comma delimiter is the choice you want to select. And you can see in the data preview if this looks correct as the columns will be separated. And want to select the input file format. For our file, we have one top per line. The next step is to match the columns of your import file to the fields on the right. The first column is our UWI, second is our formation, the third is our TVD, You don't have to import every column, just the information you are looking for. Our last column here 
is our lithology information that we've changed our custom user column to. The fifth step is to select our copy and merge method. The first option is just to add source tops to wells where you have not selected a top. There's a handy show example button to demonstrate this. On the left hand side is the source, the middle column is your current active user tops, and the right hand column is the result. So as you can see, this method only adds tops to wells that you have not selected any tops for. So in this case, only we'll add the shunda for the third well. The second option inserts only those tops that do not exist in my user tops. Let's show an example. So as you can see here, it only adds the tops that you have not picked. So for the first well, we've picked the Manville and they've picked the Manville and Blairmore. They're only going to add the Blairmore top. Additionally, if we haven't picked any tops at all for that well, they will use their tops. The third option is to replace user tops that you have chosen and the source has chosen. Let's show this example. As you can see, for the first well, they've chosen the Manville and the Blairmore, and we've only chosen the Manville. The result is going to be using the sources Manville and Blairmore, replacing our Manville top pick. However, for wells that the source does not have tops for, we'll leave our top picks. The fourth option is to delete tops. So this is going to add all of the source top information to our active user database. Let's show this example. As you can see, for the second well, the source has a top for the sawtooth. We have picked the sawtooth and the bath. However, it is only going to use the source's top. However, if there are any wells that the source does not pick a top for, they will use our wells in that situation. The last option is essentially the same as the delete tops. However, you can select a zone of interest and only delete the tops within a specific zone. Today, I'm going to use our replace tops option. We then want to define who the user is for these tops. I'm going to leave it as the default, which is the name of the file that we are importing from. The last step is to select our translation method. If this is your first import, you're going to have to create a translation table from scratch. Here we can see the creation of our translation table. The import wizard is going to ask you to match up the import tops to the system tops. The first formation is the base of fish scale, and this matches up to the base of fish scale in the system tops. Since this information was exported from Acumap, all of these tops will match up. Once you have created your translation table, you have the option to save it for future use to make your next import easier. Here we can see a summary of what has happened. We've replaced the tops for six different wells. As you can see in our active user tops, a number of the tops have been replaced in our import. The last thing to note about our tops manager is that any changes that you make automatically are reflected in your data card. If we exit out the tops manager, you can see that all of the changes have been replaced in the data card for that well.
Now let's move on to creating a point and click list. Underneath the list tab, we have the option to select wells. We also have the option to select a different database for a list that you'd like to create. Today we will stick with the wells. With the tool activated, you can then select specific wells or click and drag to select a field of wells. You'll notice in the top left a count signifying how many wells you've selected. You then have a number of options. You can save to a list as well as the option to attach while you save it. next topic of discussion for this training video is the display tools. Underneath our data tab, we have two different display tools. The first is the posting tool, which is described in detail in the land data tutorial. We will talk about the create show map layer. The first option is to select the target you'd like to create your map layer for. You can select all wells, all of your attached lists, or just a specific attached list. The first show map layer I'd like to create, I will do it for all wells. Your next option is to select what formation you would like to do this for. Either all of the formations, a single specified formation, or a formation range. You then have a couple of options. You can add a DST symbol as well as a production bubble. For my first show map layer, I will just add a DST symbol. You have a couple of options when customizing your DST symbols. First is to choose the size of the symbol you'd like to add whether or not you'd like to show the contaminants, and lastly, some posting information. If you click on OK, you can see that the DST symbol has been added to all of the wells hosting DST information. As well, as on our layer legend, it has added our first show map layer. From the layer legend, you can turn that show map layer on or off, as well as open up the settings for that specific show map layer. I now want to create a production bubble show map layer. This time I'm only going to target a specific list. I'm going to turn off my DSTs. And then I have a number of options for my production bubble. The first is the production source. I can select a single stream of production data. Or I can do a pie chart with either the monthly, the calendar daily, or the daily. next option is to select the time slice of this production data. I can either do all years, which would be the cumulative data, or specify a period of production. Additionally, I can specify an exact date range. Next is to select the fluids and their corresponding colors, as well as the transparency of those symbols. Last is to choose some bubble properties. You have two different types of bubbles, either a discrete or a continuous. The discrete will have four different bubbles representing the specified range. Continuous will have a max 
and a minimum bubble size with continuously variant sizing bubbles between the two ranges. A handy button for selecting your bubble properties is the Get Limits. This chooses the smallest and the largest production values and enters them in your extremes. Lastly, we have some posting properties that we can change. We can show the production values as well as post the units and ignore secondary completions as well as change the text options. I'm going to click on OK to confirm these changes. As you can see, the Pi monthly production bubbles have been applied to only my specified list. I'm just going to turn off my second show map layer as well as my list. The last topic of discussion for our geology training video is the contouring tool. If we go to the contouring tab, we have the option to create a new contour. Here we can see our contour settings window. Our first option is to select the source we'd like to perform the contour on. We can either do all wells, a well list, or a CSV post plot. We then want to select the type of contour we want to perform. Underneath the tops data group, we have a number of different options that are commonly used for contouring. One of which is our isopack. This will perform an isopack contour for one formation. We also have the isopack calculated, which will perform an isopack on a range of formations. Or we have the isopack sum, where we can add a number of different formations, and this will sum up the total thickness of all of those formations. Today, I will do an isopack on a single formation. You then want to select the method in which to perform your contour. Krigging generally generates the best overall interpretation for most data sets, but you have a number of other options depending on the size of the contour and the amount of data you want to work with. You have the option to filter out certain data points, and then we want to select the formation we would like to perform the contour on. I'm going to select the Swan Hills formation. You then have the choice to select the tops source. You can select the system, the user, or the option to select your user tops. Where you have no user tops inputted, it will use the system tops. I'm going to select system. Click on OK for the program to start drawing your contour. Here you can see the isopack map for the Swan Hills formation. If you wish, you can change the properties of your contour by selecting it from the layer legend and then selecting the properties button. You can change some properties such as the minor interval, the major interval, highlighting a specific contour line for instance, we can highlight the 50 meter line with a red color, as well as changing the interval of your labels. Lastly, you have the option to add a fill. You can use either a solid fill or a gradient fill, and select from any one of our Acumap palettes. Lastly, you can change the transparency, as well as customize your palette to any color. Lastly, we have some additional tools that we can use to edit our new contour. First, you select the contour you'd like to perform and edit on, and then you can select a number of the different tools. Some of your options include locking your contours, this will lock your contours to just the location that you are working in. 
if I were to navigate away from this area, you will see that the contour is locked to that position. I also have the option to turn auto regrid off so that any time I make a change it won't redraw my contour. Next we have some editing tools, the first of which is to include or exclude wells from your contour. Click on this tool to activate it. Now you can see any of the wells that are included in your contour are highlighted in green, and any wells that I wish to exclude from my contour will turn gray. Take for instance this one well in the corner creating a bullseye effect. If I click on this well with my Include Exclude Wells tool, it will turn that well gray. Now if I click on Regrid, it will redraw my contour. And now you can see that that bullseye effect has been removed. Another editing tool we have to play with is our Add or Move control points. Say I want to smooth out my 25 meter contour line, I can use this tool to do that. Simply need to click one, simply need to click on one point and enter a value. Then I can continuously click to create new contour points. can click on regrid for my control points to take effect. Now you can see my 25 meter contour line is now being drawn on my control points. So that concludes my training tutorial. Thank you very much for listening. Have a wonderful day.